These are a couple of clips from my first video of the Rose engine uh, showing the, uh, the construction of the drive pulleys. I'm going to change a round belt to a flat timing belt. Here I'm modifying the semicircular groove that previously held the round belt to, uh, to flatten it off for the flat timing belt for obvious reasons. Instead of forking out a load of money for a, a large timing belt pulley, which would cost me a, up to about 30 or 40 pounds, uh, I'm making my own from the original uh, round belt pulley. Uh, just simply by gluing a timing belt around the perimeter. The tricky part is uh, making the belt match up so that there's no difference in spacing between the teeth at the joint. For obvious reasons I'm using a thin piece of wood so that I can cut the belt right where it needs to be to make the pitch of the teeth perfect, I hope. Uh, I can use a, a file just to uh, further refine it so that it uh, fits perfectly. Uh, it's just not seating properly on, on the uh, rim of the pulley. Uh, so I'll just use a file to take the remainder off. Here I'm replacing the wooden drive pulleys uh, with uh, two uh, pre-aluminium uh, timing belt pulleys which I purchased. Uh, one is very small, uh, gives uh, about 10 or 15 teeth and the other is, is slightly larger but overall it gives me a better mechanical advantage. Thank you. 
it's now time to fit the new drive belt uh, here I've got to do a bit of splicing and joining the belt together this should be interesting I've marked the belt uh, where the uh, overlap needs to go from uh, both ends as I join together it needs to be an overlap but obviously if I just glue one on top of the other it's not going to work so what I'm doing is I'm uh, halving the thickness of the belt from one end and halving the thickness in the opposite uh, way on the other end so that when the two pieces come together it makes a full thickness and the teeth uh, line up hopefully Well, now that that's done, it's now a, a case of uh, super gluing them together. Uh, I need a little bit of jig set up for this. To rotate the mechanism by hand I replaced the old round belt uh, system with uh, two new uh, aluminium pulleys and timing belt which I've glued together as shown previously. Here I'm just modifying uh, the uh, tension pulley which was used for the round belt system previously and making it flat for the new timing belt. Because of the new pulley setup, I'm hoping the mechanical advantage will make the, uh, the cutting action less prone to belt slipping without putting too much tr strain on the teeth of the belt. Uh, here's hoping. Well, that seems a lot better. When it was a round belt, I couldn't uh, go over the cams or the rosettes in both directions I can do it now so that's that's uh, that's promising instead of using uh, rosettes or cams as you may want to call them I've decided that I want to use a spirograph. Here I've made a holder on my little engineering lathe using some taps and dies so that I can hold individual spirograph gears. This adapter which I've made on the engineering lathe will be held in two bearings which will then be held in a, a, a piece of plywood that acts that replaces the follower which I use for the rosette stroke cams. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this as you follow the video. Uh, 
I always save uh, bits of aluminium and bits of uh, thread, uh, bits of screw tops and all sorts of things in a little drawer. It's amazing how many times I can use them to adapt to things. So I've used an old aluminium uh, bolt here and uh, used it to clamp the spirograph gear. Here I'm making the follower that will hold the uh, small gear that, that will then mesh with the larger gear that replaces the, uh, the rosette or uh, cam. There are two annulus gears in the Spirograph set that I purchased. Uh, I think this is the, uh, if you like to call it, imperial one which has fractional number of teeth and the other one has a metric number of teeth which is divisible by 10 and 5 and whatever. So I'm just making a holder for this if you like to call it a hub. I had one hell of a job trying to get a large spring that will hold the tension properly because it's quite tricky to get the tension right with this so that the teeth mesh and they don't come away from one another. Uh, and I managed to use a thinner bungee cord which uh, gives me the required tension but not too much tension that the, that the teeth start to slip. Uh, you can over tension it and it doesn't work properly, it's, the tension's got to be just right but like I said I had a hell of a job finding a spring for it. Uh, you can get a packet from uh, Amazon but uh, they're all different strengths and different diameters so you really need one you can play around with before you select which one you want. Anyway if anybody knows where I can get springs from let me know. I'm testing the pattern it creates. Uh, this pink, the pink small gear which you saw earlier, isn't out of the set that I bought. Uh, in case I ruined everything and spoiled the set, so I used an, an old one I had, and it, fortunately the teeth mesh together. Uh, so I'm using uh, it to see what sort of pattern I can get. Um, I'm going to use the pen on the left side of centre and then use it again on the right side of centre and see what sort of different patterns it creates. If you notice you can see a, a slightly darker line, this is where the uh, gears got, uh, were over tensioned and I got a bit of gear slip but they, they retain their, the pen retained its position so I'm reasonably happy about it. I've used a V-cutter in the router and it seems to be coping quite well. I don't seem to be getting any shudders or any kickback from, from the cutting action. Uh, especially as the spirograph causes quite an extreme movement of the cutter on the face of the cherry. 
Uh, you don't get that with rosettes. It's uh, a, a less a less severe amplitude, but it seems to be cutting fine. The only problem is I lost track to where the cutter was and I I stopped it and took the uh, the blank, the cherry blank out too early so I hadn't finished the pattern. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, catch me on my next video uh, where I'm going to more depths with the Spirograph kit. Bye.